Hello, welcome to another episode in the Mono Game tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering Tom App Collisions. This is a bit of a more complex video than the other ones because it requires a bit of prerequisite knowledge that we've accrued over this tutorial series. If you haven't been watching this series all the way through, I recommend watching at least the video on Tom Maps to understand how to get CSV data into your Mono Game projects. Additionally, it would be great if you knew how sprites worked. But if you don't, it's just basically an image at a position. Now there is quite a bit of starter code for this because I didn't want this video to be like two hours long, but this code should be on GitHub in the link in the description so you can follow along there. Now, as the project stands, it is basically just the previous tutorial video with an added sprite. So in the last video, we basically had this finished scene or whatever yours looked like with your own assets. Um, and I've added this player. This player can move around and I'm visualizing the rectangle of the player. Now my image happens to have a gap at the top, which is why the rectangle looks a little bit too big, but it's actually the correct size. I'm just bad at drawing. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go over the code that makes this brings us to life. First things first, all the code for the Tom apps is exactly the same. We are loading in three layers, the foreground, the middle ground, the collisions uh, from this load map method, which takes in a CSV file, reads it line by line, splits it by a comma, and then converts all the values into a dictionary where the key is the actual physical location of the value in the CSV and the value of the key value pair is the actual value of the number itself. After that, we basically go into the draw method here. We loop over the middle ground, we loop over the foreground, and we loop over the collisions, and we get the destination rectangle from the key, we get the source rectangle from the value, and we make a draw call drawing the appropriate tile. Again, all this is covered in the previous video. Where the nude code comes in, is the sprite class. The sprite class is very familiar if you watch the sprite video that I made, but it's basically just a simple class that houses three variables, the texture, the rectangle for the destination, and the source rectangle for what part of the texture do you wanna crop out to actually see. We have the fields declared here with a basic constructor, and then we have two convenience methods. You don't have to make them, I just think it makes it easier to work with. An update method, all it does is allow you to move the player, and then a draw method, which just makes a draw call for you. Inside of game CS, I've declared a private member a variable called player and then I have initialized it inside of the load content in the same way that we've done with other stuff. Player equals a new player, loaded in the texture, loaded in some random destination rectangle and then I've um, cropped out the entirety of the sprite. Inside of the um, draw method here, we have at the very bottom, we have the player.draw, and then we have a draw rect hollow. And this is a very simple method that I've created that draws line segments for a rectangle to make a hollow rectangle appearance. This is because as of my knowledge, Monogame does not have a built-in standard way to draw hollow primitives. And this is a very, um, this is a way to, you know, get around that. You basically just create a solid color texture and then draw each line segment individually. Okay, so that's about it for the um, setup code. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of this of this project here. So in order to get collisions, we need to do it in two passes. And this is standard with any 2D game. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the horizontal collisions first and then the vertical collisions second. And the reason is because if you grab the collisions and try to resolve both the horizontal and vertical at the same time, then you will run into weird edge cases where you collide with like the corner of a tile and then you just glitch all the way throughout the map. It's a bit more complex than that. I'm simplifying it down a bit, but basically, 2D game, tile map, do it in two passes, horizontal and vertical or the other way around, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna create two methods and I'm gonna just kind of shell them out first and then we're going to actually implement them. Public, um, and then we want to actually return a list and then the list is going to return rectangles and this is going to be um, get intersecting tiles horizontal. I'm gonna call it horizontal. And then we want the target rectangle that we're going to be tracking this for. And then I'm going to create a second one. And this one is going to be vertical. Okay, so what's the first thing we need to do? Well, for this one, we need to create the uh, rectangle that's going to be our result. So these are going to be the um, intersections. And I'm just gonna um, initialize it to a new instance of a list. And then what we need to do is we need to get the width and the height of our sprite in terms of tile size. And that's a, actually one more thing that I forgot to mention. Um, we have a tile size variable here declared as 64. This is the size of all of our tiles in our tile map. And this is of course assuming that our tile map is of a uniform tile size, which is the tradition and how 99.999% of tile map games are. You have a uniform width and a height for your tiles. For me, that is 64 by 64 pixels. 
that is going to be very, very useful in resolving intersections with the tiles. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna see how wide is our sprite in terms of tiles. Now I already know mine is one by one because, or, or one by two actually, because I declared it as uh, tile size by tile size times two. But of course we wanna make this robust and we wanna make this so it works on anything. We can just drag and drop it. So let's just use a little formula for this. The way that we can do it is we can do int width in tiles. And then I'm gonna say this is equal to, and now what we have to do is we do a little bit of math here. We do target.width, and we wanna subtract the fractional part of the target.width. Um, so we wanna do target.width, modulus divided by the tile size. This will get the fractional part. So for example, if the, if the rectangle's width was 65 and our tile size was 64, this would return one. We would then subtract one from 65 or, and then get 64, which is what we want. We then want to integer divide by the tile size to get the result. Then we want to do the same thing for the height. So height in tiles, target.height, and target.height. This is gonna be very useful for grabbing our intersections. Now what we wanna do is we want to basically loop over these. So I'll do a for loop and it's gonna be for int x equals zero, x is less than or less than or equal to width in tiles, very important. And then x plus plus. Again, for y equals zero, y is less than or equal to height in tiles y plus plus next what we want to do is we want to just do intersections dot add and we want to add a new rectangle now this rectangle should be in tile coordinates not in pixel coordinates so again if our if our player is at x equals 64 and y equals 64 then our player is at tile position 1 1 if our player is at x equals 80 and y equals 80 our player is still at tile position 1 1 because it truncates down to the nearest tile very important information so for here we have to do something now the reason we have separate methods is because of the weirdness of this system basically with integers you are going to have an overlap on on multiple axes and that could conflict with single axis collisions so for horizontal what we want to do is we want to subtract a portion of the width and the height now this is going to be a little weird but let's go ahead and bear with me here we need to take the target's x value we then need to add on the x multiply it by tile size and then re-divide it by tile size and then here we go here and for the y we subtract one here and then make sure that is in parentheses so pemdas does not get in our way uh finally for the width and the height we're just going to do tile size and tile size and we should be all set in that regards this is a bit weird looking oh and it also should be y <laughs> it should be y there this is a bit weird looking, but basically we don't want to detect Y axis collisions when we are getting our horizontal intersections. And so what this will do is it will simply just ignore them. It will just push it over up one and avoid that entire axis of collisions. Now for the vertical collisions, it is the same thing. So just copy it, paste it, and we are good to go except this should now be on the x side so tile size minus one here oh and also we do have to return our intersections at the end so return them and then at the bottom here there we go return the intersections finally in the update code we can grab the intersections let's go ahead and create a list to store these intersections so that we can display them for debugging information so I'm going to make a private list of rectangles, and this is going to be inter intersections. And then here I'm just going to say intersections equals new. Inside of the update code, I'm going to say intersections equals get intersection get intersecting tiles horizontal, pass in the player's rectangle, and then for the vertical, we do get intersections vertical, and there we go there. Now basically what we're going to do here is first before we resolve it let's make sure that our data is valid it would be terrible if we wrote a beautiful collision resolution system and our actual way of getting tile intersections was wrong so remember that our tile coordinates are in or our uh, rectangles are in tile coordinates so that when we draw them we actually do have to convert them what i'm going to do is i'm going to go before the draw the player draw and i'm going to draw the the tiles and i'm also going to comment out the player's rect so it doesn't get confusing so we'll make a for each loop and I'll do var um, rect in intersections. 
And then what I'll do is I will make a draw call to the draw rect hollow. So draw rect hollow, pass in the sprite batch. And then for the rectangle, again, we have to convert it back into pixel coordinates. So new rectangle here, we'll do rect.x times the tile size, and then rect.y times the tile size, tile size, and tile size. Oh, and also the um, thickness, which I will do four. Okie dokie. Now let's go ahead and see if we got this looking correct. Press F5. Okay, now we're moving around and you can see that we have some tiles following our player. To me, this looks correct. Now, of course, remember that, maybe I'll actually uncomment this. Remember that our actual rectangle looks like this. So that's why I'm getting a two by three. And basically the math is this. Whatever the width and height of your of your sprite in tiles is, just take that and then add one to it on each axis, and that's how many tiles you should be seeing at, um, for these. So as you can see, it's looking pretty decent for me. Let's go ahead and resolve this stuff. So now what we're gonna have to do is we're just going to loop over the intersections and check if anything is going on here. So I'm going to go to our update and we're going to loop over them here. So for each var rect in intersections, and then we'll say if, and then we wanna do collisions, which is our collision layer try get value and then we need to create a new vector 2 and this vector 2 will be the rec.x and the rec.y and then we need to spit out a value so out int value if we try to get the value here i can make this an underscore too because we don't need it out value if there's a if there's a block there this is basically saying if there's a block in one of our intersecting tiles then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say um for now i'm going to do debug dot right line um intersecting horizontally and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the uh, vertical but say vertically okay now you can see that we're getting both and that's because we're not resolving it on either axis so we are getting some intersections now it's actually checking for these things here because remember I put little collision sprites there to visualize our stuff so if I go here it shouldn't say anything and then as soon as I get on there it'll collide like that which is exactly what we want Okay, let's go ahead and resolve this. Now for this, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more functionality to our player. <laughs> I know that I said that it was gonna be simple, but there's a little bit more. So we're gonna add our velocity here, and I'm gonna say velocity equals a new instance, which is just of x zero. Finally here, instead of doing rec.x plus equals five, we'll say velocity.x equals five, and then we'll do the same thing for the other ones. And then for left, it's going to be equal to negative five, and then for up, velocity.y is equal to negative five, and then for down, velocity.y is equal to just five. And for simplicity purposes, there's not going to be any um, like acceleration or anything. We're just going to be resetting the velocity every frame. So velocity equals a vector 2.0. Finally, what we wanna do is we wanna go into the game. Okay, so whenever we collide with them, we want to basically just build that rectangle so we can use it pretty easily. And so we'll say rectangle um, collision equals a new rectangle and we want to basically take it based on this um, value here and we'll say rect.x times tile size, rect.y times tile size, and then tile size and tile size. And then what we'll do is we'll say if player.velocity.x player is greater than 0.0f, then player.rect.x equals collision um, dot left minus the with the player's width so player dot rect dot width else if player dot velocity dot x is less than 0.0 f then player dot rect dot x equals collision dot right basically snapping to the right side let's go ahead and make sure that our right side collisions work first so we collide with the right and you can see that we are colliding perfectly fine here now let's go ahead and do the vertical one the same way. So I'll just copy the code, exact same thing. We grab the intersection. Then we say, if the Y is facing downward, then we want to do the collision um, dot top minus the player's height. And then if the uh, velocity is facing upward or if we're going upward here, then the Y value is equal to the bottom of the collision tile. Now let's go ahead and check this. And as you can see, we have ourselves some proper tile map collisions. 
Now, I will admit there were a couple stutters throughout this tutorial, and this is because no matter how many times I can like rehearse or practice this or how many times I can do this, um, this it does have a couple kinks with the math. And so let's go ahead and go over it a little bit slower for those that don't understand or you just want a better overview. So first things first, this works really well when you have velocity separated from your actual destination rectangle, which is why I ended up changing it from just having a straight up affecting the um, position to affecting a velocity variable. What we are doing is we are applying, we are changing the value of our velocity every single frame and resetting it to zero so that um, whenever we let go of a button, we just immediately stop moving. Inside of the game one, what are we doing? Every single frame in the update method, after we update our player, we will push our player on the x-axis, we'll move it to its new position. We will then grab the intersecting tiles by calling our intersecting tiles method. We then loop over those intersections. We check, does, this, does our collision layer contain a tile at this location? If it does, let's construct a temporary tile that is at this location. And then let's just check, is our player moving right? If it's moving right, then we wanna to snap to the left of the tile minus our player's width. Otherwise, if we're moving left, then we want to snap to the right of the tile. And then it's the same thing for the Y axis. We add the velocity to our destination rectangle. We grab the intersections for the vertical side. We loop over the intersections. We check, does the collision layer have these values? We create a temporary rectangle to represent our, collis our collided tile. We check, are we moving downward? If we are, we snap to the top of the collision minus our height. And otherwise, we just snap to the bottom of the tile. This is where a lot of the confusion can come with, and I'm going to be 100% real with you. I wrote this myself with no tutorials, so the math could be simplified. I know that there's a way to simplify it, I just haven't thought of a way. If you can find a way to simplify the amount of stuff here, then I would highly recommend doing it. Of course, you could cache these values. You could just simply store these values somewhere and then you reuse them. For the sake of the tutorial, I just put it all here locally so it's a little easier to see. It's all in one spot. So that's basically it. That's the entire thing. I will say something else. What you could do is you could just say, you, to add gravity, you could just say velocity.y equals 5.0 and then if otherwise acted, it will just always be moving down. Um, and this will work. So it'll just be moving down here. And look at that, we, we are colliding with the ground, perfectly fine. So there you go, that's how tile map collisions can work. And by the way, this is extremely efficient. It would be more efficient if I wasn't declaring local rectangles every, like in all the functions. This is independent of the size of the tile map because you're at most checking six tiles here. You're only checking for these tiles. The size of the tile map does not matter. So this is a great way to optimize large maps. Okay, well that's basically it. I hope that was well explained enough. If not, I have a Discord server with a ton of game developers there, as well as myself. I'm very active on there. I'll answer any questions you have. It's a great welcoming community. You should join, it's pretty awesome. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue this series and continue making other videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.